Where are we headed, Sammy? To Chanel's house. Why are we headed to Chanel's house? Because she's welcoming the babies. Where are the babies? In the back. How many are there? Nine. What are they? Four fluffy. Four fluffies. So Chanel, our daughter's going to... They're two weeks old now and Chanel's taken over for us, which is fantastic because she's at home all the time. Um, and she could really pay attention to these guys, and so they're in great hands. So, got another phone call today about somebody who's had puppies, not one of our breedings, somebody else's. They were actually bullies. Had some bullies that were in trouble at day three. And uh, so I asked a few questions, and I uh, asked whether they were born early, and they said no. So then they uh, said, well, FaceTime me, FaceTime me, sleep faces. Guys, you've got to pay attention to this. I'm like, every day I'm getting people, not my customers, but every day I'm seeing vets really messing up on this, and it was heartbreaking where, you know, so they already lost one puppy, I just got a text, it says I lost two more. So, you know, it's like, guys, pay attention. I've given you all the, all the information on this, pay attention. Look at it, I just did another one the other day, it says how to avoid losing puppies. Get it right, folks, because otherwise, you know, you think you're in the good hands with these vets, and I mean, I don't want to bash vets. They know what they're doing for the most part, but they're not experts as far as timing C-sections, a lot of them, and they, and they they get it wrong. And just like, it's so frustrating. I hate it for people when they lose puppies. It's just not good. All right, Faye Walker, just 10 minutes ago, said, our English Labrador whelp nine puppies on April 7th. Okay, so- They're English Labrador. Yes. Yeah. Shortly after whelping, she accidentally smothered one. The next day, my nephew, who built the whelping box, put a second big rail, extending two inches above and two inches out from the existing big rail. She smothered a second puppy in the middle of the box. After that, uh, we constantly repositioned her and the puppies every 24 hours for six days. She was okay after that. Is there anything we could have done to prevent this? Does it happen often? Well, yes, the same thing prevents it. It's invested our whelping system. So the whole idea behind this is that we put heat in one area only around the area that's directly under the pig rail on the periphery of the box. And the reason why this works is not because we've got a pig rail, that's in fundamental to it. The reason it works is the puppies naturally congregate in the place where they've got heat. And when they're finished nursing on mum, the one only place they've got heat is under the pig rail. So they're not in the center of the box. They don't get smothered by mum. That's why this works so well. I feel like I'm half an under with that, and I apologize. I'm kind of frustrated about that last text. But look at our system. It's not too expensive. And I mean, the fact is, is whether if it cost a thousand dollars, it'd be worth it because it saves puppies from getting smushed by mom. It's not guaranteed that they're not going to have a problem, but it just, I mean, I just don't get any reports of people having problems. It works. And it works because the whole idea behind this is mom's not getting extra heat. She's happy to be in the middle of the cage. She wants to be with her babies. She doesn't get anxiety because you don't have to separate babies and mom. And the puppies spend 95% of the time where Tammy? Under, under the, pig, the pig rail. Under the pig rail. Where the heat is. Where the heat is, exactly. It's such a simple... Till they're hungry. Till they're hungry and then they go in search of food and they find mum. Burnett Grisham says, what is your background? Are you a vet? Nope, not a vet. Nope, any advice I give you, remember, I am not a vet. I'm not a medical professional. Um, I'm, a, I'm a geek and an engineer, that's what I am. And But, but Tammy and I have been doing this for how long, Tammy? 17 years with French Bulldogs alone, eight years before that, or eight years we did Labrador Retrievers. Yeah, so we, we so yeah. although, you know, we're, um, what are we? We're people who care about you. We're not vets, so anything you get from us, if we tell you wrong and you screw up, don't come back and sue us because we're not vets. I want to make that absolutely clear. So all the information you get from us is hopefully good information it's certainly based on experience we think about what we're doing we try to give great information but i don't promise that we'll always get it right but we will never intentionally tell you anything that we think is crap but remember we're not there so it's very important that you know that your dad uh, was a doctor my dad was a doctor he wasn't a vet he was a doctor yeah. um but but i mean look all the information that we're giving you is information that basically you can find in other places on the web the problem is is that people generally don't want to give this information out for some silly reason that they feel as though it's like secret stuff, which is nonsense. Um, and we do care about you. And also, we are constantly thinking about things that we can do to make things better for ourselves and for you. And those are 
evident in the products like the incubators and the whelping systems that we sell. So enough of hopper. I really feel like I'm lecturing to everybody. Am I lecturing to everybody, Tammy? Mm. A little bit. Don't mean to be. I don't mean to be bossy. Um, okay. Flat Earth Granny. Flat Earth Granny says, you guys think raw livers are healthy, good or necessary for the pregnant mom? A lot of people do it. I'm not really a candidate for raw food personally. I worried about. I worry about. I mean, there have been problems with people who do raw food, where they get things like salmonella and salmonella. And look, we as humans don't eat raw food. Well, we do, but not raw meat typically. And if you do, things like sushi can really cause you problems. Certainly, dogs. I've mentioned this before, and then people come back and say, "Yeah, but dogs have got different intestinal tracts." And that's definitely true. And out in the wild, because they're all eating raw food all the time, I've never seen. I've never seen a, a dog out in the wild with a camping stove in front of it cooking a piece of liver. So, you know, so, so certainly they are set up for this. And I mean, the argument for the raw liver is there's things like you know a lot of uh, um, iron in it, things that you need to produce blood. And dogs that have had whelps lose blood. So I, I would say you know try it out if you want to. I, I don't. I, I can't think of anything that says definitely don't do it. I think the quality foods are really pretty safe and they're you know these people who manufacture these foods if you're buying a quality food they're spending a lot of money on research to try to do the best they possibly can for you and they're going to charge you a price for it and there's certainly a convenience factor isn't there i mean yeah so enough said on that does the brucellosis require blood sample yes it does and it also requires you have to spin it down to collect the serum so it won't work without that the two tests that we sell that require blood are the brucellosis and the pregnancy test. The two tests that don't require anything special are the uh, canine parvo virus test and the uh, Giardia test. Susan Brocksmith says, why cottage cheese versus oral cow plus? I'm not saying it. Hmm? We're not making people choose which one. Well, well, well. We'd recommended cottage cheese, and she's saying why that versus the oral cow plus. Oral cow plus is great. I mean, never used it, but I'm sure it's super, super duper. It may be a better way of getting cows from the milk. No, if, if you've got access to oral cow plus, uh, you know, I'm sure it's absolutely fine. Um, certainly, the cottage cheese is going to be cheaper and more convenient. And, and the other thing about the cottage cheese is you put it on a dog's food, and it makes it that it's yummy for them, and they want to eat the food. And one of the problems that you have is them losing their appetite and so that's one thing that helps isn't it but on the other hand if you give too much cottage cheese it does what mm, makes puppies a runny mess, puppies a runny mess. Mm -hmm. so so absolutely i think that, uh, uh, so susan also says in the show ring if you have a dog limping a bit we give one coated low dose aspirin as a last resort but I wouldn't recommend it. I've done coated low dose bare aspirin. Okay, well, I, I'm not going to condone aspirin because the things that I've read say be very careful with aspirin. So, I mean, there's, so, you know, there's other quite safe analgesics that you can give dogs. And uh, so, you know, uh, I don't know about this one. I'm, I'm not an expert on it, so I'm just going to defer to saying I, I always err on the side of caution. Mommy's losing her milk. The pups are 2.5 weeks old, one or two and a half weeks old. I see those silicone nipples they used. Rec or do you recommend something else? Those little silicone nipples that she's talking about, where it uh, has the milk in there and the puppies latch onto it and nerves on it, the brown mm, thing. No, I don't think that's what she's talking about. No, that? Oh, no. Okay. She's talking about what we've used on a oh. on a baby bottle. Okay. So you yeah. can go to. Here's a great thing about the silicone nipple. Go to Walmart. You can buy one today. Go half an hour from now. You can have one in your hands. Regular baby, zero to three month with a preemie nipple that's made out of silicon seems to work really well. I have no problems with them latching onto it. Um, the rubber one, the latex ones, and the rubber ones. I don't seem to like them as much, but they probably work fine too. Um, so yeah, we recommend that absolutely. Kahiki Sakata, probably butchered your name, says, I give my French Zyrtec for allergies, especially when she's constantly scratching and when she has a heat rash. I don't know. 
never, never, never heard of that one. I had to do some research for it. I mean, if you're going to do that, Google it and make sure it's okay for dogs because some human medications are definitely not okay for dogs, and I just don't know about those. Okay. Question: Blue tri male and a brindle female. Do you know what color puppies? Well, you've got to give us more information on the brindle. If the brindle is just a brindle and nothing else, then she can produce only brindle and fawn puppies, and that's what you're going to get. If she carries blue, or she carries tan points, then you can get blue puppies and tan point puppies. Kelly Hanley says, I wish so much my breeder had done my baby's dew claws. She caught it and ripped it off. She was in so much pain. She has, uh, she has, she was lame, bless her. Well, we agree. That's one of the reasons to take dew claws off, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I get people who say, "Oh, it's so cruel taking the dew claws off." You know, you How would you like to have your thumbs yanked out? It's not yeah. like that whatsoever at all. If, they yeah. Get it caught, jump off the couch, and get it caught on the couch. Yeah. How long does it take to take it? How breaks long does it take to remove the, a dew claw? Oh, just seconds. Seconds. What kind of pain are they in? Then, almost, almost none. And the moment you've removed it, they, they stop whining immediately. Yeah. They, they don't like it when you clamp down on it, but the moment well, you've removed it, they, they're good. They whine because you're holding them down. Yeah, exactly. exactly. They don't like that. Uh, yeah, sleepy today. Today's Sunday. Uh, Web ZHD says, so I had my first litter. I will have my first litter soon. The stud I picked out was absolutely brilliant. Good. Sounds like you must be familiar when you say brilliant. So I want to keep a boy from that litter for a stud dog in the future. How do I identify in a puppy what's good and what, what's bad looks wise? Are you asking me? I'm not paying attention. I'm sorry. You're driving. I'm driving. And I'm tired. Well, the first thing is you have to be able to identify what is the right structure that you like in a French Bulldog. And if you're in doubt on this, go to the breed standard. Go look at AKC sites, they've got pictures of French Bulldogs that look correct. So the first thing to do is to, is to, is to realize, recognize, and know what is a right looking Frenchie. And then from that, it's hard to tell in a puppy what it's going to turn out like. The best indicator is probably to look at the parents. So that's the next thing. But you know, certainly you can look at the puppies in the litter and see which are the smaller ones, which are the bigger ones, which ones have longer noses, which ones have longer backs, and get an idea about which might be the best one. And of course, the other thing about this is the color, the DNA is also important to this as well. But the one thing that's hard to breed into a dog is structure. The thing that's easy to breed in is color. So definitely you're asking the right question, look for structure. Well, and if you know what's on the pedigree too, that kind of gives you an idea also. Yep. If uh, Damien Campos says, if I have a lilac moral, what do I need to produce an Isabella? Let me get this off the screen. It's 13 minutes in. What do I need to produce an Isabella? Well, the answer to this is, is that if you've got a lilac, uh, when we say lilac, we're talking about a dog that's little d, little d, little co, little co. It's not the got the ingredients for an Isabella, which is instead of little co, little co, it's little b, little b. So the answer is, if you want to get Isabella's, you're going to have to start breeding back to a dog that at least has a copy of testable chocolate, little b. Get those in the puppies, then breed that back to another dog with little b, and then you've got a shot at getting some Isabella's, otherwise no. Susan Brock, we had a couple with Susan Brocksmith. She's got three questions in the other day. Good for you, Susan. I'm hearing and reading that Hellas Frenches will be the new fat over the fluffies. Thoughts, I surely hope this is not true. Well, we're Me not. Too. Yeah, exactly. I mean. It's not my cup of tea. No, I, I don't think we do. I mean, look, when we did. We when did, you've got a full fluffy, their hair is like silk. Not all of them. There's some of them that's got a little stiffer coat. But the coats that we have is just like silk. Just so soft. I just put a video up of you with our new platinum, oh, he's platinum, soft. Uh, full fluffy. He's so freaking cute. A hairless dog? Eh, I don't know. I, don't know. I know this. Me, reminds me of a baby bird that you find in the nest that doesn't have any feathers yet. It's just. It's close to death, and it's mm. going to freeze to death in the next five minutes. The hairless. Sorry. Ones. 
we're not going to do hairless. I know we just we're not at the age where we're going to go into a venture and do hairless. We're not going to us personally not going to do hairless. Um, no. So, so I, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, look, you know, Francis, each his own. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. That's right. <laughs> All right, last one. Any any tips on weeding puppies from mum? Tell me your own. Can you start this? Let's say, let's say that you've got. Let's say you may start it out at four weeks on the gravy, and then five weeks. See how good they're doing, and start putting mom in there only in the morning and taking her out during the day so many hours and back in there before night time, and then take her back out again. Gradually break her down on her so, so what's going through my mind is the first thing is, is why would you want to do this? So you could be in a situation where mom's milk is crappy and you've got to wean them quickly. You could be in a situation where mom is being aggressive towards her babies. You've got to wean them quickly. Yeah. And it's some Well, point, it's aggressive because maybe you're putting food in there and they're getting into mama's food bowl. Or you haven't cut their nail short and they're scratching her yeah. up or whatever. Yeah. So, but you are going to obviously be in a situation at some point where babies are going to go and leave mom and they need to be weaned. So. So the weeding process, the first thing is they've got to have teeth before you can start this, right? Because you've got to get them onto something like Royal Canine Puppy Starter Boost. If you, you can get it. If you can get it, right. Or, or you can make your own kind of gruel up. I mean, you can take yeah. regular kibble, put it in a blender with some goat's milk and make a slurry oh, out yeah. of it. Yeah. But there is going to be... So you've got... They've got to have some kind of teeth or at least the beginnings of teeth before you can start this. So we're talking about dogs that are probably at least four weeks old. And sometime between four weeks and eight weeks old, they've got to be weaned, right? So the process that we go through is start off with them with mum all the time. Mum gets taken out of the cage. The puppies have a pie dish in there with some slop in it, which they're going to eat. And you introduce them to the first time to the food, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't know what to do with it, so you kind of take their head and dip it in it, and they get a little taste of oh, it. Oh, there's some of them that know exactly what they're going to do with it. They've already been trying to eat mum's food. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's an interesting time because... One starts it, the rest of them start Yeah, one it. gets the competitions on, they're all in there, they're inside the bowl. In fact, one of those bunt type dishes with a central big part in the middle of it is that... The so tray step. Yeah, what do you call it? You can buy them specifically uh -huh. for dogs, can't you? I don't know uh -huh. what they're called, but that's the way to go. So that they don't get in it. They, it's like a, it's like a continuous feeding trough, basically a circular feeding trough with a central barrier. Some of them has got to get all four feet in there and eat. Yes, or well, lay in it, don't they? So you you do that. Then the question is, how much do you feed them? You feed them enough until they stop. They start slowing up on the feeding. They'll get fat, fat bellies. That's enough. Let mum in. Mum can go finish up what's left. Be careful about competition with mums and babies to start with to make sure she's not going to get upset when they're eating her food. Mm -hmm. You can go from a really soupy mix to Royal Canine. Yeah, when you say with, soupy, you meant like a thick gravy. Yeah, right. <laughs> then it gets to be like porridge, doesn't it? Yeah. And then it gets to be, and then finally you get them on kibble, and, and then you've got to go through the transition of getting mum to dry up, so you're going to have to put mum with babies at night time, but not during the daytime. So it, they can have some comfort, the puppies, and also mum can get drained of milk. So that's it. We've gone on way too long on this. We're already at 18 and 19 minutes. So you've really listened to us rattle on. If at the beginning this was a bit of me chastising people, it's because I'm so concerned about people losing puppies. It's completely unnecessary to have this happen because you take puppies early. Sometimes there's an accident, you know. Absolutely. But the, the trouble Other is, times. there's a difference between an accident being told by the vet to get it done and not questioning what's going on. So, right. You know, when anyway. you know the due dates, yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Hopefully you know the due dates. And even if you don't know the due dates, there's a whole process that you go through that's on the videos that put together that tells you what the signs right. are so you can get this right. And it all culminates, if you're not sure, with a progesterone level of less than three. Enough of that. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. See you all. Bye.